Welcome back as we get ready for the Word of God. Uh, before we go there, let me give you a couple of quick notices. So church has changed a lot. It's all gone online, as we all realize. Um, but just to let you know, youth is still happening on Tuesday nights uh, via Instagram Live with Tim and Tiles and Connect Groups are happening. Uh, on youth on Tuesday night, adults on Wednesday night. Um, and there's there's a whole lot of pastoral care, people ringing one another, FaceTiming one another and chatting to each other. So if you have a need, please reach out to us and let us know. You can message us on social media or ring us on our phone numbers. Uh, let us know that you, you need support and you need help. That's what we as the pastors and elders are here for, to help you in that. Uh, so we're going to uh, have a word from Pastor Sonia in a moment. But before we go there, let's uh, get ready to bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Um, I want to read you this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 7. It says this, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. I'm just just want to remind you this morning about the faithfulness of God. God is so faithful. He's faithful in the good times and he's faithful in the not so good times, the tough times. And so just want to encourage you this morning that God is faithful and an encouragement to our, our hearts as well to be faithful, to be faithful in our worship, to be faithful in our, our love and our kindness to people and to be faithful with our giving. Uh, it can be challenging at times like this, but it's, it's a good test for our faith to rise to the occasion and to continue to have generous hearts and to be faithful to what the Lord is asking us to do. If you want to make a, a gift today, uh, uh, bring your tithes, your offerings, then you can do that um, using the church website. Uh, the instructions are on there for the church bank account to put a direct debit, or you can use the Tithely app uh, either way and uh, bring an offering to the Lord. Last Sunday night, I heard uh, Sonia preach a word, and there was only a few of us there. But I thought it was such a good word. It was so timely about the secret place, about meeting with God, uh, that I asked him, I said, bro, can you record that? And I want to, I just want to share that with the whole church. So uh, this morning, can I encourage you, even if you've heard this word before, sit back and get ready to hear the word of the Lord as Pastor Sonia brings us a word about the secret place. You're going to be blessed with this. Good morning, Pastor Sonia here. It's a great joy and a privilege to be bringing the word into your homes this morning. I hope you and your family are really well. And uh, these are some crazy times that we're living in at the moment. And so as I was preparing this message a couple of Sundays ago, and all of this craziness was taking place and unfolding, I asked the Lord, what is it that you want me to share with the church? And in the same breath, he basically responded and said, I want you to preach about me. And so that gave me courage in my heart to know that the word that I'm about to bring is going to be about Jesus. It's going to be about uh, bringing encouragement, bringing life to wherever you are today. And may the word just encourage you uh, this morning. So if you have your Bibles, come with me to Matthew chapter 6. And we're, we are going to read out of a few passages uh, today. So Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 7. And the second bit of um, scripture that we're going to be reading from today is Psalm 91. So Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. and says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. But assuredly I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. I want you to underline that word, secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Come over with me to Psalm 91. And we're going to read from verse 1. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's pretty powerful, right? Powerful verses there just to inspire and stir faith in your heart for the times that we are living in. So before we get into the word, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for, um, for, for our families. We thank you for keeping us safe during this time. 
But Lord, as we look into your word, we pray the Holy Spirit, you would just lead us and guide us into all truth and uh, help us to see your heart through these verses today and bring life and joy and peace and hope into our lives and into our families. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, Jesus receives some shocking news. His cousin John the Baptist had just been beheaded. And so his disciples, John's disciples, came and delivered the news to Jesus. And his response to that was, I just need to withdraw from everything and just be alone with the Father. Now, as he tried to do this and withdraw from the crowds, more people followed him. And the Bible says that he had compassion upon the people. And so he ministered to them and taught them about the ways of the kingdom of heaven. But what he also did was to perform a miracle through his disciples where he fed the 5,000. And so after performing this miracle and teaching them and ministering to them, he sent them away. And he also sent his disciples ahead of him on a boat across the Sea of Galilee. And so where did Jesus disappear to from there? What was his plans? The Bible said that he went up to the mountainside to pray. Isn't it so cool? He, he, even though he was feeling grief in his heart because of the loss of his cousin, the Bible says he still had compassion on the people. And so because of that, he was able to minister to them, to meet their needs, to teach them about the ways of God. And then when it was convenient, when the time was right, he was able to go up into the mountainside to be with his father. And that's so special and so important to know because there are many times when Jesus would minister on the earth, that he would often withdraw from the crowds. He would withdraw from the disciples, from the people around him, just to be with his father and just to spend time with him. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, He, Jesus, arose a great while before day and went to a solitary place to pray. It didn't matter how late it was or how early it was in the day. Jesus would often prioritize time to be with his father, whether it be on a mountainside or whether it be in a garden or a desert place. He would often make time to be with his father. And I believe that this is the secret of his ministry on the, on the earth. It wasn't how powerfully he preached the, the kingdom of heaven. It wasn't the miracles he performed while he was walking along the countryside. In fact, the key was intimacy with his father. Close connection. The Bible says that you know Jesus would often say, I cannot do what my father is not doing. I would often do, he would often go out and minister to people, but it was only because his father was doing a work in those people around him. And so I believe those moments where Jesus would be with his father, he created a secret place. And that's my heart's cry, is that we would be a people who would create a habitat for intimate conversations with the father. That's all the Father wants from us. He doesn't want our time. He doesn't want our possessions, our assets. He doesn't want our family. He wants our hearts. Because if He has our heart, then He has everything else. And it's so beautiful to know that Jesus will come into His heart. He wants to make His home in your heart today. And so Jesus would often go into that secret place with the Father where He would be refreshed, where He would be refocused and refired and to be able to go out and continue the ministry. The disciples noticed that there was something different about Jesus every time he spent time with his father. And so the disciples decided one day to muster up the courage to ask Jesus an important question. Now they didn't ask Jesus, how do we do ministry well? What are the 10 steps of being a great leader or how to produce a or, or, or create a, a fruitful ministry? It wasn't any of things, those things, or even the 10 steps of healing. It was simple. The disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. In other words, we've seen, what, we've seen times when you've been with the Father, you've been praying, you've been spending those, those intimate times with Him, and you come back and you're performing all these signs, wonders, and miracles. There's got to be, more, there's got to be something more to this. And the disciples felt that. Maybe this is the key, that if we ask Jesus, that he would tell us the extra secret. And Jesus said simply, um, fine, I'll teach you how to pray. 
You see, when we create a secret place, we're creating a, a place where heaven can invade earth, where, where the kingdom of heaven can invade your personal situation, can invade your life wherever you are. I remember in November 2013, I was just leaving hospital. My sister had been um, in hospital and she was dying of cancer. And this deeply disturbed me. Um, it really um, put a strain on my, 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 my soul, my emotions. And I came away from the hospital feeling really emotionally stressed. And so instead of sleeping when I got home, I just literally jumped on my bike. And I started to ride my bike around the block. And as I was riding, I was weeping, I was crying, I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. It was, it was everything. It was uncensored. It was just my heart's cry. I was just telling the Lord how disappointed I was, how angry I was about this cancer, about what was happening to my sister. You know, all those things. I was just pouring it out to the Lord. And as soon as I finished doing my little bike ride around the block, came home, not only was I physically exhausted and physically tired, but I felt refreshed because I was able to spend that time with the Lord and just pour out my heart, pour out my soul uh, and just my, my, my hurt, my pain to the Father who is there to listen. And so what is the secret place? And I want us to look at Psalm chapter 91 and I want us to look at it from the lens of a person who decides to, to create a space or create or come into the secret place with the Father. And so Psalm 91 has a lot of nuggets in there that I want us to, to kind of get a hold of. And so let us read that passage together. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. So good. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. But if you make the Most High your dwelling, if you make the Most High your dwelling, dwelling meaning to sit, to abide in. When you make the Most High your dwelling place, even the Lord who is my refuge, no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near your tent, for He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all, not just some, in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone, and you will tread upon the lion and cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent, because and here's a key verse in that passage. The Lord's going to be doing all these things. And here, here, here's, what he, here's the heart of this passage that the psalmist is writing. Here. He says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. There's a couple of key, key, key words that come out of that passage there. When we decide to come into that secret place of the Most High, when we make the presence of the Lord our dwelling place, a place where we abide in, not just visit every now and again, not just um, stop in when, it, when it's convenient for us, but when we make His presence our dwelling place, not, we will receive rest we will receive salvation. There will be a covering over us. The Bible says that He will protect us. He will, he will answer our prayers whenever we are in trouble. He will deliver us. This is pretty powerful in the time that we're living right now. And so this is only possible when we call upon Him, when we make Him our first love, and when we make the Most High our dwelling place. In Acts chapter 17, it says that, that the Lord is looking for a temple made not with human hands, but with His hands. And I believe that it's a place where you and I need to create, design, build a habitat for the Lord to come and dwell in our hearts. It's a place where we can often go to in our times where we need refuge, and times where we need strength. Uh, because the Lord wants to make His 
home in our hearts. And he is Emmanuel, God with us. He doesn't want to be outside of us. He wants to be in us so that he can come out through us. And so in Matthew chapter 6, when he talks about the secret place, Jesus says, when you go into your room, shut the door. Notice that it doesn't say when you go into the synagogue or when you go into that public place or when you go into that, that, that room, that auditorium full of people. It says here, when you go into your room, you see your room is a personal, it's a private place, it's a secret place. And it's in that place where the Lord hears our prayers, where the Lord sees our heart's condition. And he's saying to you and I, when you go into that room, shut the door. Because the Lord desires to be with us. I mean, there's nothing else in the Song of Solomon's chapter 2 that gives language to how the Lord feels about his time with us. And it says here, O oh my dove, in verse 14, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. I see oftentimes when I go in, when I when I'm troubled in my heart and my spirit, when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed out, it's often because my eyes have shifted away from Jesus and it's been placed on things that are natural, things that are of this world that are temporal. And it's in those moments where we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Because when we are fixed and focused on Jesus, all those issues are still there, but they move into the peripheral. We make Jesus our focus. And that's what the Lord wants us to, to, to do in this time right now, is to keep our focus on Him. To keep our faith grounded in uh, the rock. Grounded in, our, in Jesus, who is a fortress and our strength. And so we need to create a secret place. See, in ancient Jewish times, they would build their homes and there would be a flat roof. And there was a purpose, there was a reason behind it. It's because that flat roof was often used as a place where people can walk or conversate if they didn't want to do it in, around the family. It's a place for deep reflection and meditation. And it was a roof where, where there were often rooms to the side but it was in these moments that people who just needed to come aside, come away and be with the Lord, they would often just pray on top of their rooms. They would often call this the upper room. And so I believe the Lord wants us to create a place, a private place that's sacred, that is secret, that we can meet with the Lord in deep meditation and in intimacy and in reflection, where we can be with Him. You see, in today's world, life is so busy. You and I both know this. Life can be so busy with, with work, with family, with church, with things that are happening in the community. I get that. Busy, busy, busy lifestyles. And the question remains, how do we create a time and a space to meet with the Lord? Well, I love the words of Matthew Henry, the Bible scholar. And this is what he says about the secret place. He says, the desire to pray and the love of prayer will create such places. The desire to pray and the love of prayer will create such places. In other words, it doesn't have to necessarily be a physical place. But you could be driving down the road and in that moment there's this desire to pray because you love prayer. And so there's a secret place that you can go to in your heart and speak with the Lord. There are, there are often times when you have to go to a physical place. Like for me, it may be just as I'm training or whether I'm at BP and I'm having a coffee and I'm just in the corner there just being with the Lord, reflecting, meditating. Or I could be walking through Totra Park and just be walking with the Lord and just talking with Him. Those are places and spaces that I create in my heart to commune with the Father. Because there's a desire to pray, there's a love of prayer. Now, Jesus had this difficulty as he was ministering on the earth. He was often surrounded by people, and at times it was impossible to be alone with his Father. But he lived in the practice of secret prayer. Jesus didn't allow any distraction to affect his attraction to his Father. You see, there are so many distractions that we have of this world that can often distract us from our attraction to the Father. You know, what is it for you? What's distracting you from going into that secret place? What's distracting you from just spending that time with the Father? Because you know what? The Father desires for us to spend time with Him. 
In fact, he's just waiting for the time and the moment in the day where we would just turn our focus, our gaze upon him. And he just wants to spend that time with you and I. So let me ask you this question. What is distracting you from your attraction to the Father? What is distracting you from your attraction to the Father? So as we continue to read on through this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6, it says, Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. You don't have to worry about whether the Lord's going to be in that secret place. He is already there, which is pretty awesome. We just have to take the time aside to be with Him, and He's waiting for us. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Let me ask you this question. What is this reward that Jesus is talking about here? Is it more blessing? Is it more favor? More of God's hope, peace, and joy for your life? What is this reward that, I, that the Lord is speaking about here in Matthew chapter 6? And Ben Fitzgerald, who leads the awakening around the world, I love what he says about the reward. And he puts it this way. He says that the Lord will walk with you publicly where you've walked with him privately. I mean, it's so good. Let me just read that again. The Lord will walk with you publicly where you've walked with him privately. That means when you go in public, the Lord is with you. And there'll be a sense, there'll be a knowing in your heart that the Lord is totally with you. Doors open up. You just feel that things just begin to happen for you. Why? Because as you've been spending time with Him privately, God's manifesting Himself in your world. And He's, and he's leaking out of your life. And it's pretty powerful. It's amazing. And it's called the inside-out life. And I love how Joshua... Uh, in the book of Joshua, um, the Lord reminds Joshua that, hey, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. So don't worry about it. And so he was reassuring Joshua because Joshua wasn't just anybody. He was a commander of the army. And so he was more than that. He was also a worshiper because as we discover through Scripture in the book of Exodus, we find that in many occasions that Joshua is spending time in the presence of the Lord. He loves the presence. There's a hunger, there's a desire in him where he just wants to know more of God. He just wants to be around the Lord. And so the Lord reminds Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And the Lord showed himself strong and mighty through Joshua as he led the conquest through Canaan. And so in the same way, the Lord wants to show himself strong and mighty in your life. Whether you're on a mountaintop celebrating everything that God's done for your life, or whether you're in the valley and you're, and you're just grinding life out, the Lord wants to show himself strong and mighty in your life. He wants to reveal and manifest himself through your life. Why? Because you've been spending time with him privately. You've been walking with him privately. And it's a powerful thing where, where you just know that Things are happening in your life and you just can't explain or un, you know, can't even describe it to other people. But it's because you've just spent that time with the Lord and He just wants to break out in your world. Amen. And so just to close, I want to read you a poem called Whispers. And this is written by Brian Simmons and Gretchen Rodriguez. And it says here, My child, I want you to live in such confidence in your relationships with me that nothing, nothing moves you. I want you to walk with such awareness of my presence that you and I carry on a constant conversation and I want you to feel my nearness every moment of the day. I want to draw you into the depths of my heart day and night. This is the inner life I've called you to lead and I want you then to live from the inside out. I offer you the chance to know me, to really know my character and to believe in my generous nature. I want you to know me as Savior, friend, and overcoming King. Come on, that's awesome. I offer you the chances to live in the way that you've always dreamed, to be fully aware of the direction I am leading you in, to notice a gentle tug that pulls you towards your destiny into an excited and spontaneous response. I want you to be so confident in my spirit within you that the realm of the kingdom is just as real or even more real than the situations around you. I want you to live from the inside out. That there summarizes the message that I'm preaching you to you today. That is to come into that secret place 
to live in such awareness of his love, his mercy, his grace towards your, your life. And to watch him, watch the Lord just explode to manifest himself into your life. And that is my prayer for each and every one of you, that we would just walk with him with such a grace and a mercy in those private places. And particularly in the times that we're living in, there's more of an urgency now to go into that secret place. Not to run away in fear, but to run towards him in love, knowing that he is our shelter, he is our dwelling place, as Psalm 91 writes. So let me just close in prayer as we close off this word today. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us. You're a good, good Father. And we love you, we cherish you, we honor you, and we give you praise. Lord, I pray over each and every family today, Psalm 91. Lord, the words that are written in the psalm, may you just continue to be their dwelling place. May you cover and protect each and every family today, keeping them safe from every harm, pestilence, or any terror by night. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're with your people. May you bless them today in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Amen, amen. God bless you and have an awesome week. I trust that word from Pastor Sonia really bless your hearts and that you and I practice getting in the secret place with the Lord this week. At the end of each uh, Sunday, we want to finish with communion. We want to finish with remembering uh, the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you to prepare for that as a family each week. Uh, you can get some grape juice and some bread from the supermarket and have that ready. Um, but maybe today you don't have any grape juice. Maybe today you just have some water and some bread. That'll be okay. That'll be okay. So uh, why don't you get that ready as we get ready to have communion here together. In fact, I want to read you a verse from John chapter 19. And when the soldiers came to pierce Jesus' side, it says, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. So I don't have any grape juice this morning, so I've got some water and uh, some bread here to remember the Lord. Uh, his body was pierced and blood and water flowed from his side. This is symbolic of what happened when Moses struck the rock and water flowed out. The water flowed out from the rock. Jesus is the rock that was struck. And when he was struck, the water flowed out. The water represents many things in the Bible. It represents uh, the living water, the, the river. The, the Holy Spirit represents the washing of the water of the Word. It's the Word of God that washes our hearts and our minds. Uh, but it also is a reminder of the Lord Jesus. You know, from his side flowed that living water. It flows to us today. And so as we take a moment here to have communion, if you have something, would you join with me? And uh, let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you. In this moment, we remember the, the sacrifice, the price you paid for us uh, Lord Jesus, to have life by the breaking of your body and the, the, the blood and the water that flowed from your side. And so today, Lord Jesus, we remember that, we honor you for that, and we ask that you would continue to cover us with your blessing, cover us with your life, cover us with your protection, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you take the bread with me? Maybe you have juice or water. Would you take that with me as well? And remember the suffering of our Savior. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful day with your family or ring a friend if you're on your own and uh, enjoy the secret place with Jesus. Take care.